guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we are talking about my top 12 favorite audiobooks of 2018. If you guys missed it yesterday, I shared my top 10 favorite physical reads of the year, so today we're going to talk about the books I listen to on audio. Now, these aren't necessarily my all-time favorite productions. They're literally a combination of the production of the audiobook mixed with literally the content of the book and how well it was written and how much I enjoyed the story. If we were doing one based on content as far as like having a full cast or having sound effects and things like that, there would definitely be more things on this list. But for now, we're just going to do like my favorite stories combined with the casts and everything like that. These are actually some of my most favorite books of the year. Some of my favorite books of all time. I enjoyed most of these quite a bit more than I did my physical reads. I'm not sure if it's just with that added element of having someone tell it to you, but I just, some of these just like blew me away. So I'm going to be a little bit more excited in this video than I was yesterday, although I loved the books I mentioned yesterday. These are like the creme de la creme. <laughs> I do have a little cold. I apologize if I sound funny. I am just trying to get these videos done. Again, I'm not going to be going in order of worst to best. It's just going to be kind of random because it's way too hard for me to pick. I will point out the ones that were a little bit step above the rest. And also I will not be including any books that I reread even if it was via audiobook. I want this to purely be like a new story experience for me. I'd also be counting a series as like one book. Um, so there technically are a lot more than 12 books on this list. Normally I mentioned the narrators in all of my audiobook videos. I won't be doing that for this video because I was just not feeling good enough to go and write down everybody's names. So for those that I do remember the narrator I will mention them but just know that I loved all the narrators for these books and I do mention them normally in my audiobook wrap-ups. Without further ado, we're gonna just dive right in. First up, we're gonna talk about one that almost didn't make the list and I decided to add it on last minute. Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge. This one I listened to like in January or February of this year and the narrator was so unique and whimsical and it was just like a slower read, but it was so romantic and magical, and part of that's the writing style, but she did such a great job. I have been dying to read Crimson Bound, and I don't know why I haven't done it yet. I finally found it in the physical form, so I'm excited to do it. But this audiobook was just so good and so different. It's definitely not like fast-paced or anything like that, but it was just, it was fun and romantic and charming and and slow and in a good way. I don't know. It was so, so, so good. And this one, the reason I decided to add, add it last minute is that it kind of stuck with me and I keep thinking about it. it it's just one of those ones that I kind of want to reread again. So this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling um, about a girl who has been raised her whole life to be given to a prince and they've also trained her to kill the prince. So this prince comes and he takes a girl every so often, like somewhat Beauty and the Beast, you know, vibes. And this time they decide that they're going to train her to kill him. So that is her job to like save her town from his magical ways. He's kind of a fairy type character. I don't want to give away too much more because it's so magical and whimsical. And there are so many things that happen in here. This is a polarizing book. You're either going to love it or not like it. I love Beauty and the Beast retellings. This one reminded me a lot of Uprooted, even though they're very different. It just, I don't know, it stuck with me. Next, we're going to talk about Daughter of Smoke and Bone Trilogy. This one is by Lainey Taylor, and I listened to this one on audiobook, and I wish I could remember the narrator because she is awesome. <laughs> um, I loved this, especially in the first book. The other two books, I, I got interrupted halfway through the middle of book three and I had to wait to continue it because I had to return it on audiobook and it was the whole thing. So I don't think I enjoyed it like as a whole as much as I could have if I didn't, if I hadn't have left the world and come back in. But it's so different. This is an urban fantasy about angels and gods and monsters. So not necessarily demons, but like real monster, different styles of monsters. Kuru, our lead character, draws sketches. She draws sketches and she has blue hair and she's so fun and unique and hilarious. And this one is set in Prague, which is really, really entertaining to read about and super, super interesting. And it's just unlike anything that I've ever read and I don't, nobody likes to go into it too much because it's just nice to just like find things out as you go because it's so surprising. And ah, I loved it so much. I kind of want to like reread it right now. 
Next up, I want to talk about Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This was my city's big read for the year. I'm not sure if every, every city does that, but my city picks a like city-wide book for the library for everybody to read, and then they do events themed around the book. So they had a, um, a talk with Emily St. John Mandel, which unfortunately I missed, and they also had like an art exhibit, and it was really neat. So I decided to read this. I feel like the description of this one always comes out wrong. It's often told that it's like a traveling Shakespeare troupe in a post-apocalyptic post world, and they go around from place to place trying to cheer people up. That is part of it, but that's not really the point of the story or the main part of the story. So that didn't wind up bothering me, but I could see how people would read this expecting that, and that element is not as heavy as you would think based on the description. It's really just about relationships and like what would happen if the world got a plague and like everything stopped. Like in this, in this book, I'm pretty sure like 90% of the population dies and there's like 10% that are immune to this plague and they live and so it's about what would happen if that happened but in a not in like a dramatic fast-paced action-packed sort of way if you don't like those kinds of books you will still like this one because it's very character driven and heartwarming and you know they people sit around and think about hey this might be the last time that I like make a phone call or eat an orange or brush my teeth and Emily jo St. John Mandel called this her love letter to the world and it really is like it just makes you like think and I read on the back like somebody said after reading this book it made them like set it down and look around and think like oh my god everything is a miracle and everything's magical and it's true it really makes you appreciate like what you have and where you're at and the relationships there are a lot of different relationships in here and they kind of all connect back to one person and I don't know this won't be for everybody because it's really hard to describe if you go into it with an open heart of just like this is just a special 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 read that I really enjoyed the audiobook was excellent I do recommend speeding it up to like 1.4 which I do with almost all my audiobooks but especially this one because it's a little bit slower I do recommend listening to this one over reading it because I think it'll be even a little bit easier to get through because it is quite wordy but I just thought this was really special and this is one that'll like stick with me for a long time. Next up I want to talk about Caraval and Legendary by Stephanie Garber. I read both of these this year, this one in January and Legendary in May when it came out. These are all narrated by Rebecca Soler who I discovered this year who narrates most of Marissa Meyer's books and a lot others as well. She is one of my favorite audiobook narrators of all time. I listened to over a dozen of her audiobooks this year. She's just so fun and accurate for teenagers and just she's just entertaining and really cute and I just she does good guy voices and everything she's very very unique so Carval is set with a magical kind of like a carnival but like a theater troupe I don't know and they travel from a city to city and do like this magical game slash show that you can participate in if you're invited. And it's very magical. Some real magic, some not so real magic. There's a lot of trickery. You never know what's going to happen. You never know if it's real danger or not. And our lead character has always wanted to go and she finally gets invited and she winds up sneaking off with her sister and then her sister becomes a part of the game. So that's kind of all I want to give away. It's super magical, super, super fun and whimsical. The second book was even better and I loved this one. But the second book was just like, what? Oh my gosh. It's so good. It's one of my favorite series of all time now. I just, I can't stop talking about it. <laughs> Next up, I want to talk about the Three Dark Crowns series by Kendar Blake. I read Three Dark Crowns and One Dark Throne last year on audiobook. And this year, I listened to Two Dark Reigns. This, I originally thought, was going to be my new favorite series of all time because I love this story and I'm so obsessed with it. It is about three sisters that grow up and they have to fight for the crown. The description isn't exactly what it seems until like later on in the series. Um, it's really about learning about these different places that these princesses grow up and they have a different like magical mystical ability. So one of them is really good with nature and she can control the elements. One of them is supposed to be good with poisoning and poisoning people and con ingesting poison and then one of them is supposed to be good with like animals and things and so she's supposed to have a uh, familiar which is like an animal like a intense pet <laughs> and so um it's about learning these different regions where they are because there's the naturalist the elementalist and the poisoners and you learn about their different areas and it's just got a back history of their world and i was just so so fascinated 
with this world. I loved the novella that went with this that I physically read. Queens of Fenburn was one of my favorites. I love learning about all the different magical powers and the girls individually and even the si extra characters that you think are side characters are so entertaining and they're just so dark and it's so rich and it's so intense and there's so many like little shocking things like this one I've heard people think that it's slow. I didn't think it was slow but I think it might have been because I listened to it on audiobook or just because I really love like dark royalty magical world um, but the last book was really good and it took a wild spin that I just it just went places I did not think that it would go and so I'm really excited for the finale um, I'm not sure if this is going to be one of my favorite series of all time like my favorite series of all time ever that's originally what I thought um, but I haven't thought about this one as much as I have some of these other books so that's the only reason I'm wavering a little bit it's still one of my favorite series of all time it just might not be like the top level if that makes sense. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna have our little Marissa Meyer slash Rebecca Solaire category continued. So first we're gonna talk about the Lunar Chronicles because I listened to this in the entirety, including the novellas and the little side stories that go with it. Um, they're all narrated by Rebecca Solaire, who again I mentioned I loved, and <laughs> this, these are all fairy tale retellings that are like sci-fi fairy tale retellings, so Ender is actually a cyborg and she lives in New Beijing in the future and there are spaceships and like all kinds of robots and ah oh, it's just so unique and this is just such a fun series. All of the characters are so much fun, all the relationships are freaking adorable and all the stuff that happens is just action packed. It's like watching a Disney movie. It's so much fun. You just don't want to stop. You just keep going and going and going and it's just it's just a blast. That's all I gotta say. It's action-packed, romantic, it's cute, it's funny, it's everything. Then we're going to talk about Heartless, which is Morris Meyer's standalone. This is a Alice in Wonderland retelling, sort of. It's like a backstory on the Red Queen, and it starts with her being a young girl, and she has uh, aspirations to be a baker, and she meets the Mad Hatter, and then you kind of learn how she got to be where she is. I love a good villain backstory, and this is one of my favorites. This was so good that I, as soon as I finished listening to an audiobook, I wanted to pick it up and read it. Like, that's like a weird thing. Like, I didn't even want to re-listen to the audiobook. I wanted to pick this book back up and really read it. Probably partially because this book is one of the most beautiful books ever. Like, look at that. But I just loved it so much and the ending was amazing. Oh, it's such a good villainous backstory. I couldn't get enough of it and you really feel for the Red Queen, even though you don't want to, but it's got really fun stuff in here. It has so many nods to Lewis Carroll. She does such a good job making her own whimsical, Wonderland-esque type things that happen, and oh, uh, so fun. So much fun. I think I like this one even better than the Lunar Chronicles. I'm not sure. I just love Marissa Meyer. She's my new favorite writer, um, but yeah. Heartless is amazing. Then we're going to talk about Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I just was on a Marissa Meyer kick and so I just kept listening and Rebecca Solaire still narrates this one as well with Dan Bittner who narrates the male perspective. And this is a sci-fi book about superheroes. So this one is set in the future. We just wind up getting superheroes with people wind up having like magical abilities and this kind of creates chaos and then order and then maybe not so much order and so there are there are renegades which are the superheroes which kind of become like the police because they're so much more powerful and then there are uh, villains in the story which I can't remember what the villains name are but you kind of come to find out that maybe the renegades aren't as great as they seem and maybe the villains aren't as bad as they seem. Our girl Nova who is on a mission for vengeance and she meets a boy and then things happen so this one has love, adventure, fun sci-fi aspects and even if you don't like superheroes I feel like you're gonna love this one. This is one of my favorite books of the year. I'm really upset that I didn't get to Arch Enemy. I wanted Jeff to listen to this, my husband Jeff, to listen to this with me um, and I wanted to listen to Arch Enemies with him together and we haven't, he hasn't gotten to Renegades yet so I'm being nice and waiting for him but I was so excited for Arch Enemies and now I'm just like whatever I'll wait till next year but um, I think the third one's coming out next year as well. One of my favorite books ever, so so good, so fun, nice twist at the end. I just can't say enough good things about it and yeah it's great. Next up we're going to talk about Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. This is narrated by Will Wheaton who was a little kid on Star Trek and has wound up doing a lot of really fun things since then. He's on The Big Bang Theory, 
playing himself. He has a YouTube video about games and stuff, I think, as well. And he is just so perfect to narrate this book because this book is sci-fi, kind of dystopian. It's set in the future where America has gone awry and things have gone really downhill and we have a lot of these places called the stacks which are basically people living in trailers that are like stacked up on top of each other like apartments and just there's like dirt and clutter everywhere and everyone's depressed and so this multi-millionaire creates this video game called the Oasis where people can do a virtual reality and they can go to school and they can do all these things in the video game and they never have to really leave their home. You can even like order things through the game and stuff and uh, the world is free for the most part and so it's it has all these really cool aspects about it. And then our multi-millionaire dies and puts an easter egg into the oasis in this multiverse virtual reality game that if somebody finds it he will give them the oasis like plus a bunch of money so uh, it becomes a massive hunt for everyone to find this and people dedicate their whole lives to it and then companies start dedicating everything to it and our lead character is on the hunt for that easter egg i can't go into much more because there's so much detail it is so good this is one of the first audiobooks that i listened to in january and my god it was amazing this is an adult book but it's pretty much ya appropriate but will wheaton the reason he's so perfect to narrate this book is because he's so nerdy and there's so much nostalgia in this there's a lot of talk of like 80s video games and movies and music and and Will Wheaton is just perfect to know all that kind of stuff he also narrates Armada by Ernest Cline which is one also one of my favorite books of all time this was just so amazingly well done I again when I stopped listening to it I wanted to listen to it immediately again because I was just so so good and this is one I feel like everyone will love it has mass popularity right now because of the movie which was only okay I heard a lot of people really liked it, but I, it just, it was good on its own as a movie. It was okay. It was cheesy and it was fun, but of course it just couldn't capture all the detail of the book. It's a 16 hour audiobook, so just imagine trying to condense that into two hours. Um, it, it's just so good. It's one of my favorite books of all time. I can't get enough of it. It's so much fun. It's so, so fast paced. The relationships are amazing. You fall in love with the characters. And Will Wheaton does such a good job narrating it. He just reminds me of like all the nerdy guys I grew up with in high school. So I like can't get enough of his narrations. And he's only narrated like three books that I know of. <laughs> Let me know if you know if he's narrated anything else because I am like, I'm like all on board with Will Wheaton's narration. So anyway, this is one of my also my favorite books and it definitely makes my list. Next up on my list is Mermaid by Carolyn Turgeon. I had a really hard time because I wanted to put a mermaid book on this list and I was torn between Mermaid and Sea Witch which came out this year which was also absolutely excellent but Mermaid for me just pushed up a little bit ahead. This is a Little Mermaid retelling and oh my gosh is it a Little Mermaid retelling. It's almost exactly the same at some parts which is like good and bad. Carolyn Turgeon does a lot of retellings and I've mentioned before her male characters are kind of the worst if you really think about it but I think she kind of knows that and the stories wind up being more about like female friendship and like relationships. If you kind of go into it less for the romance and more for just like a great story then you will enjoy it more but this one was done so well I still think about it. I loved it so so much. It's one of my favorite mermaid books ever. The narrator was so excellent. She had a beautiful accent and it was so fun to listen to. I listened to it quite fast. It followed enough of our classic Little Mermaid story mixed with Hans Christian Andersen with her own unique spin on it and I loved it. Next we're going to talk about The Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I read, physically read Illuminae and it made it on my top 10 physical books that I read because I didn't listen to it. With Gemina I listened and read it and that is the way to go with the series. I'll say it time and time again. Physically read it and listen to it please. This is a sci-fi book set all told in like file formats and chat logs and pictures and journal entries 
and it is so so unique so you get that awesome visual aspect that I think is really important and that adds so much to the story and makes it really a different reading experience but this is a full cast audio there are like over a dozen different narrators for this they are all amazing they help you differentiate the characters so well because there are a lot of characters with different accents and things that I think would be a little bit confusing especially because certain characters wind up having different nicknames and things so it's kind of hard to follow in here but on audio it was so great reading and listening to it this might be my favorite reading experience of the year because it was like reading slash listening to a movie because I had both elements and I was just fully immersed in the story I would like drop everything to go and read this book I just couldn't get enough I'm pretty sure Obsidia would be on this list too I'm just not done with it yet um, I'm really sad but I, I can almost guarantee you that it would be on this list as well because the audiobook is just amazing so far so I love this so much Mine is set way way in the future about a, about a group of people that are mining on a specific planet illegally and a company finds out and instead of turning them in they decide just to try and go and kill them off and take over the mining operation that they didn't know what was happening uh, so they could make a bunch of money and take over the land and all that kind of stuff and so it's kind of about them being on the run and each book is a companion book but ties into the other books so you get different characters in each perspective I'm assuming some of our characters will come into play at the end of the finale but um, you get different perspectives like one is on the spaceship and one's on one spaceship one's on another spaceship one's on the mining operation and it's just so interesting and it's so fascinating I do think that can be a little bit confusing if you're not used to it so just hang in there and get used to the format but definitely start with Illuminate because that's book one and I think even if you don't like sci-fi you'll like these because they're just so different and so fun and lastly, I'm going to talk about Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I've been bragging about this book since I read it in July. This audiobook narrator is also excellent, but again, speed him up to 1.4 at least. He does have a slower narration. This does have a slower vibe to it. This again won a Prince Award. It, once again, a sci-fi book set in a utopian society in the future where we have figured out how to and not die. Like even if we get hit by a bus, we figured out how to bring us back. And so because we are immortal, we have to find a way to decrease the surplus pop population because people are having multiple sets and generations of kids and the world will become will get overcome and so we have set into place something called the scythes and the scythes are people that are designated to permanently kill a certain amount of people each year to keep the population down and the scythes are kind of free from like they're kind of free from judgment and getting in trouble but this utopian society has become so well run like we barely have prisons and people barely act out of line because we just figured how to like not to be sick or be upset and all kinds of different things and so this is about two young people that becomes our scythe's apprentice and so you get journal entries from our scythe and then you are learning about their journey and learning about this world so this is a heavy heavy world building book it has a really good character um development as well but it is a lot slower than it sounds but that being said I never personally felt like it was slow I really like a super good world building book so because it was done so well and I was so interested and it was so fascinating to think about all the things you have to deal with if we never die or get sick and it was just so well thought out I just couldn't get enough of it we are in the middle of Thunderhead right now and I'm sure that would make it on this list as well because my husband and I love it this is one of our favorite books together which is so much fun it's so fascinating I think it's gonna be a movie which I could just scream about I'm so happy I'm so so happy and so excited it's one of the books that sticks with me the most that I think about the most that I want to talk about the most because you're just like what and the ending is like oh my god it's so 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 good and it's almost my favorite book of the year I just can't decide because I listened to and read so many good ones Okay, you guys, that is all for my uh, favorite audiobooks of 2018. If you don't like audiobooks, please check out some of these books in the physical form because I liked them not only because the audiobook was amazing, but because the books are just amazing. Like, I have reread some of these and they're just as good in written format. I just really enjoyed the audiobook narrator's telling of the story as well. 
So it's not an audio specific good book, like they're just good books. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if your guys' favorite audiobooks because I'm constantly, constantly listening to them and I'll be doing a lot more audiobook content in 2019. Thanks for putting up with my crazy sounding voice and I will see you guys next time on the bright side.